Welcome to the Digital Photography Cafe. I'm Trevor Current, your digital marketing guy. And I'm Joseph Christina, your professional photographer. So grab a latte, pull up a chair, and join us as we chat about the art and business of photography. All right, everybody, welcome back to the show. This hour, we have Scott from Kodak's Film Division. Go ahead and give us a little background about Kodak's Film Division. Certainly. You know, uh, Kodak uh, was uh, uh, founded over 126 years ago. It's a huge innovation if you stop and think about it. What the transition from glass plates to flexible film meant in terms of the accessibility, uh, the consumer uh, photographer was invented with with roll film. Uh, no longer did you have to be a you know a scientist to uh, create images. You could be an artist and basically you know push the button and Kodak will do the rest. Uh, so you know we uh, have been making film for that entire time, innovating along the way. Uh, we invented the digital camera and we still do a lot of activity, kind of behind the scenes uh, on the professional side. Uh, such as the uh, Leica chip or the Phase One chip, uh, a lot of medium format cameras use our chip as well. So we're still pretty relevant uh, in, in a variety of ways uh, to the professional marketplace. Excellent. And in this year's show, um, what is Kodak's uh, film division kind of highlighting? Well, yeah. As far as film goes, we are uh, we're kind of looking back now at a five-year run where we've actually introduced four brand new films. Uh, we had the T-Max 400 film, a uh, huge improvement in the uh, image structure on that film. Uh, we uh, also uh, came out with our Ektar 100 film. It's actually the finest grain color film made. And most recently, uh, late last year, uh, we introduced the Portra 400 film. And uh, that improvement in grain was so good, it got pretty darn close to where our Portra 160 films were. Uh, so we added some brand new technology to the 160 platform to kind of keep that spacing you would expect between a 400 and 160 film uh, kind of relevant. So, uh, so this year we introduced the Portra 160 film and it's going extremely well for us. Yeah, that's really great. Um, now what's the advantage of these films? I mean, why, why would a photographer want to shoot with the portrait films? What's the benefit going to be? Well, well the portrait films are just uh, incredibly flexible and forgiving. I think that's probably the number one virtue. If you're shooting in mixed light, uh, if you overexpose that film three stops or two stops under, you're going to get a usable image out of that. And I think that is a, it's a great peace of mind for a photographer that's got to get the shot. Uh, they reproduce skin tones just gorgeously. You know, continuous tone just has a little different look than, than what you can get out of digital capture. And, uh, and you know, in the case of uh, grain, if you, if you want to exploit that with smaller formats, uh, you get that as well, which, uh, which can be fantastic in, in the right kind of image. You know, so, speaking about digital, right, you would think that, you know, everything has gone digital and, and someone would think, what the heck is anyone going to do with film these days, right? How is Kodak seeing the market as far as film? I, would, I guess I would ask, why are they even continuing the quest for making fantastic film? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. We, uh, we're very lucky to be, you know, intricately linked with our motion picture group. And uh, the motion picture group is continuously innovating uh, new products. And of course, all that technology we can bo borrow for, you know, still photography. And which is uh, what we have done. So we've really been able to sort of raid the, the cabinets and cupboards over a uh, motion picture group and come out with these, uh, these, new, uh, these new films that feature uh, much better image structure uh, than the, the previous generation had. But really, we do look at that as an investment. Uh, we, we do believe that uh, the film market, while smaller than it once had been, is um, is really has a sustainable uh, platform to it, and we are uh, uh, we're basically making those products for um, that marketplace. So it's it's uh, it's an exciting time. Are you really seeing that that market pick up for film? Are you seeing like like what generation of photographer is it? Old school photographers that one shot film or going back to film, or is it the kids coming? up now that are shooting digital, grew up with digital, that want to explore film. Yeah, I mean the past three years have been really fascinating. So at trade shows when I'm out with photographers and you know I, I've seen photographers make this switch and transition, it's been exciting to me. But you know what, I really haven't necessarily seen that effect in the numbers until this year. Uh, we've seen spikes and we've seen good things happen. Uh, when we introduced the T-Max 400, 
the following year, black and white sales uh, were up pretty dramatically. But overall, it's just kind of a mis mismatch. This year, we're seeing kind of strength across the board with our color negative and black and white films. And what is driving that is, you know, we have that existing base of film users that maybe are doing documentary work or fine art work um, that maybe never left film. Uh, there's another group that uh, they were, they're digital photographers, but they probably once were film and for different business reasons they're deciding to go back to film. Uh, one of the main reasons I think is to differentiate their work, to differentiate their business. Uh, a lot of people have some high quality digital gear slung on their shoulders and you don't really differentiate your, your work with that. And I think sometimes a client hires a photographer and you don't always know what you get until they deliver the final product. And, um, and, and it's a bit challenging for uh, for, for highly skilled photographers out there to differentiate themselves. Some people, therefore, are, are kind of going back to film because it's just different equipment and it will set them apart. And while film uh, is, is wonderful once you master it, you do have to make that step. You, you have to understand film. Uh, you don't necessarily get that same feedback. So I'm seeing that quite a bit recently. Um, I think we all were compelled to, to move in that digital direction. We felt we had to or we would be missing something. And, and all the skills and knowledge you gain there are still valuable because most film workflow tends to be kind of hybrid anyway. So some people are making the decision to kind of go back. Now the final kind of group that's using film is, is the one I'm most excited about because uh, these are, these are uh, typically younger, creative people, uh, you know, I don't know, 18 to, to 30 something, and uh, they were kind of born digital. The whole photographic uh, world has been digital. Somewhere along the way, through education, through a friend, through their social networks, uh, they've discovered film, and it's so different. And I'm trying to get my head around that because I was trained in zone system, uh, and, but I'm trying to get my head around if, did, if images to me were digital, I was looking at them on my iPhone or my iPad, to make an image out of real materials, pass light through it, and chemicals, uh, uh, and, and to, to hold and touch and feel that image in a very tangible, analog way, I think that would be cool. And it's, you know, it's vinyl records. So what we're seeing is, uh, is that group really grow pretty aggressively, and we're seeing that uh, in our sales numbers this year. And you know, there's, there's groups out there like Lumography and, and, and Holga cameras, which I think give you a low entry point uh, to be a film photographer, and if you do get hooked with it, you know it just kind of goes from there. People are really passionate about it when they fall for it. That magic moment occurs later in their career. It happens usually on the front end, uh, but in this case, it happens a little later. But it, they're equally as smitten. It's, it's you know, it's uh, you know, for me, I, I shoot fine art, and when I shoot fine art, it's usually with film. I just like the way I like the great way the grain sits. I just like the way it looks. You can fake it but you might as well just make it right at the beginning, right, right in the camera. So, but the thing that's interesting that, that what you're saying as far as the, that tactile and actually printing, I noticed that if I go and shoot, let's say, digital, and let's say there's a thousand shots, well, out of those thousand shots, how many do you really print? Very few. But when you shoot film, chances are you're going to print a lot more. You're not going to leave them in a negative format. You're going to make, you know, contact sheets. You're going to somehow print something, and you have something tangible, you know, on the back side. So I think that's wonderful. Yeah. There's definitely something to be said about film too. I mean, you know, when I was going through art school and everything, you know, we were in the dark room developing our own black and white and doing our own prints, and you know, the tactile being in there, the smell of the chemical is noxious as it was <laughs> but you know I mean there's just something about that whole creative process but also when you're shooting film you've got 36 exposures or 24 exposures what have you you think more about what you're doing you plan more and I think it does if you if you discipline yourself I think it does help you become a better photographer because you're thinking more before you're hitting that trigger rather than just clicking not really thinking about it and then saying oh I'll reframe right. it or the idea of spray and pray spray and hope and that something out of the you know 100 exposures you just made is worth it. I, I think I think the creative process uh, film versus digital is just fascinating to me it um, you know there's so many things uh, with film you don't get the feedback as you're photographing and there's this fear and paranoia within you that will uh, probably not make you take or make more images, but you're going to work it a little harder because you didn't get a real or false uh, uh, assurance from the back of the screen. I've got it. 
uh, I'm going to move on. You, you, you get down lower, you try a different angle, you work it a little longer. Um, and, and, and you got to feel sort of satisfied before you walk out of that situation or scene because it's never to return again. And, uh, and then that wonderful, horrible anticipation uh, when you get your film back, if you send it to a lab or if you're developing yourself, it's, uh, you know, it's Christmas morning. So uh, it's, uh, it, that's an exciting part of it. And it is very different. Uh, but that is also one of the great things that digital provides, right? That immediacy, you get it right away. That is, certainly is a strength, but in some ways, you know, it's, uh, it's not quite like film. And I think the creative process is just absolutely fascinating. Well, excellent. I think everyone got a lot of great information out there. Now, how can the listeners find out more about the portrait film, the new stuff that just came out, along with all the old that Codex had forever? Where's the best place for them to go? Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, our portfolio has been... Uh, uh, revamped recently, but you know we still have our old favorites like Triax and uh, some great films out there. I think the best starting points our website. It's uh, it's Kodak.com slash go slash professional, and from there you can get onto the professional film page. Um, also, you know some of our output products and printing uh, and, and other areas. So um, we have uh, wonderful inkjet materials. Uh, uh, the great thing about the, the inkjet materials is that we use the same surface, same rollers to texturize uh, our papers uh, as you may be getting from photographic materials from your photographic lab. The E surface, the luster surface, you can kind of mix and match between those two if you need to, uh, to work on a project, an album, uh, and you want it to match in terms of its look. Well, thanks so much for being on the show. It was really great having you. Well, thank you both. Thank you.